Well, hi everyone, it's Jeff Hopper here with Lynx Players President Jeffrey Cranford. Continuing our discussions, our introductory discussions for the lessons in spiritual due diligence yes. number five, death and life after death. And we are all the way to lesson seven now, which is titled with one very disconcerting word, hell. Hmm. Jeff, why, and this is a powerful question that comes from virtually everyone out there, particularly those who are not sure what to do with Jesus and the Bible and, and whatnot. Why does hell even exist if the God we believe in cares for every person? Well, first of all, the Bible is pretty clear uh, that, that hell was never created for man in the beginning. Hell mm -hmm. was a place for Satan and the fallen angelic realm. So what existed in that dispensation of time where there was an angelic realm and there was the creation and what capacity did they have for atonement and restoration. We kind of have to read between the lines there, but the Bible's very specific that it was not created for man. Now, however, first of all, we have to define what hell is. And I, I there was a book I read in, uh, many years back that had a profound impact on me by a guy named Jan Hedinga and he talked about hell being merely the absence uh, of God's presence. And we see that in a, Paul's letter to, um, uh, to Titus as well. Uh, you'll be cast away from the presence of God forever. Now, of course, the question is, well, that is totally and completely unfair, and I'm not going to believe in a God who would cast his own creation mm. that he purportedly, that he loves, out of his presence. And yet, as Jen talks about, and he has a very intriguing title to one of the portions of his book, which is, Hell is a Provision of God's Love. Now, what? that is a real turn of events here. I don't believe in a God that would create hell, and yet hell is the absence of God's presence, and essentially as you reject God's provision of salvation, which is Jesus, what you're saying is you're really rejecting God's rule and reign in your life. So, first of all, what is heaven? Heaven is where there is one will reigning supreme. That's where, and that's what makes it heaven. There aren't multiple wills clamoring for attention, vying for power. There's one will that reigns supreme and everybody is in perfect acquiescence with his will. And as a result, we get a place with no more tears where there was a restored earth, where the lion lays down with the lamb, etc., etc. Hell, on the contrary, is a place where God's presence has departed. It's for the individual that says, you know what, I don't want God to rule my life. I want to run my own life. I don't want to be have my life encroached upon by a vengeful, wrathful God that I don't want to serve at all. I want to be as far away from that God as I can possibly be. And God says the only place in the cosmos that would fit that description is going to be this place that was originally not even designed for man. But if you want, if you don't want my presence, I will not force you into my kingdom. Mm -hmm. And as a result of not being forced, you actually, people will, I believe, in a horrifying way recognized that the world that they enjoyed here was actually saturated with the presence of God through not only his saints but his creation and other things and now they're in a place where they completely are eliminated from his presence. God's a gentleman. He will never force you to live under his rule. He created us imago Dei, meaning in the very image of God. In doing so, he gave us free will. Because of the free will, he gave us an in tremendous capacity for love and relationship, but also the capacity to reject him. And because he's a gentleman, he'll never force you or me into his presence for all of eternity. That would be. And so there is one place in the cosmos. It's a provision of his love that you do not have to serve him. You do not have, you can curse him for all of eternity. The problem is, You'll be there with all the other fallen creation, angelic and humans, who choose to curse God and reject Him for all of eternity. Not a place I would want to be. Right. I think we get a picture of that in <clears throat> Revelation where we read of these plagues sent upon the earth. And 
you know, what people are saying is, oh, when they see how bad hell is, of course they'll turn to God. So, you know, and God, he'll obviously let them in. But when we see these plagues, these horrifying plagues occurring, mm. the response of the people is cursing God. Cursing. Not turning and going, wow, this is a powerful God who's going to do great damage to me. Right. Uh, he really is the one I should believe in. Instead, they say, oh, this is horrible. I don't want anything to do. I didn't want anything to do with them. Now I really don't want anything to do with them. That's right. And so I think that that is a, a very helpful understanding in terms of what you're talking about, that this person has built a thread where essentially every day they've sent to God the message, I don't want you, I don't want you, I don't want you, I don't want you. And so that even when God says, okay, you don't have to have me, here's the alternative, they'll say, great, I still don't want you. Right. And, and we kind of in our you know, what we might deem our That's compassionate good. Good. self would say, oh, well, of course they'll turn to God. Scripture doesn't necessarily indicate that, of course, they'll turn to God, yeah. even well, when they're faced with hell. That's for sure. And, you know, it reminds me too, Jeff, of uh, one time um, we were in, I was in Munich, and I was going through an art gallery. If you see some of these uh, very uh, old depictions uh, by various uh, artists of hell uh, four or five hundred, six hundred years ago, you, very often you get kind of this picture of kind of a pit, uh, usually people without any clothes on, kind of clawing at one another, trying mm -hmm. to get out of this pit, um, everybody stepping on one another. You know, it's a really a picture of what hell is, and, and it, it's, it's where many wills reign supreme, everyone fighting for their own will. And in heaven, it's one will reigning supreme where there's perfect unity and continuity and perfection and beauty where everyone ascribes the power and the authority to the king and we subject ourselves to him. And in return, he calls us sons and daughters, not forced, not forcefully, and another place where everyone gets to vie for control and nobody has any ultimate power. Um, so I, I don't know that those medieval artists really uh, were that far off when they gave, some, gave us some of those depictions. Mm, interesting. Well, certainly I would not want to leave this discussion without emphasizing the fact <clears throat> that while hell was created for Satan and the angels who fell with him, and now will be a place where those who essentially join him go as well, that above all that, God desires our heart no question he doesn't desire to send someone there he desires our heart and so there is still time to say yes i want what god has for me i want to live under his will as opposed to mine and jeff this is either a secular power a, a religious power play to inspire fear and then have people give or you know submit themselves to religious authority which uh, is the secular view today of the conversation about hell and why it's so maligned, and sometimes even maligned within the context of some churches, mm -hmm. or it's true. And so there is really a choice in our beliefs about eternal life, not only eternal heaven, but eternal separation from God and a place. And it, last thing I'll say, you gotta remember that when Jesus is teaching about hell, he's using the word Gahan in the New Testament. And you've been, we've been together to, to Israel and we know the old city and there's that huge wall and it's a wall that's the different wall than the time of Jesus, but sure. you get the idea. Outside that wall is uh, on one side uh, on the southern steps there uh, near the city of David, there was a valley called the Valley of Hinnom. And Gahana is a derivation from that valley. And so as Jesus was teaching, he was talking about hell. He was talking about you being thrown outside the city where God's will would reign supreme mm -hmm. in a figurative way over the wall and into a place. Now, what was over there? Well, it was the place of refuse. Uh, in fact, someone, dead bodies that may be crucified would be down there. And it's a horrific picture in some of the language that we get you know, maggots eating on a dead body mm -hmm. and, and refuse and a constant smoldering and burning as if it was, it's their garbage dump, yeah. that Valley of Hinnom. And so Jesus says, outside the city walls, that's what you get. So some people say, well, I really struggle with this idea of the lake of fire and all this thing you see in scripture. I said, there really shouldn't be that much of a struggle. Uh, I was quickly after the Rodney King riots, remember in, in South LA a number of years back, 
I found myself uh, without my own intentionality of making a wrong turn and finding myself literally within a few weeks of those riots and down there and once the law for those momentary days where the the policeman kind of ret retrenched and went back what happened to the city when all the wills were reigning and vying for control uh, it burned. It burned. So I don't know that, that that use is not God up there, okay, what terrible thing can I create to punish people for all of eternity? I think it's just the natural repercussions of people trying to fight for their own will. And the antithesis of that, of course, uh, would be God's presence for all of eternity. Reaping what they've sown. Reaping what they've sown. Wow. Well, thank you. And next time we will review uh, study number five.